Day 28 of the Quarantine Reviews. The making of evening and night comes to an end. So part two, we're covering Audience Unselected. For a brief recap for anyone just joining, this album was produced by setting out a bunch of EPs that the audience would be able to choose their favourites from, and that's how you ended up with side A and side B. Uh, link is in the description for the previous episode, so you'll be able to get a better picture of what was going on. So getting straight into it, there were three favourites for me, and one that I was not keen on. So going for the favourites, first, Noise. Now that's a really intriguing mixture of Western and Indian slash Middle Eastern influences. You've got the instrumentation of sort of downbeck drums and sort of sitar play mixed with western guitar play that also still it alternates between more western style and more middle eastern style so it's quite intriguing to just sit and listen to to see what sort of mixtures of sound you can pick up on The style of drumming is very intriguing in sort of how the rhythm is speeding up and slowing down and it feels like a heartbeat that's changing pace and calming down when the person is near, the whole message being that this particular person can calm the noise and chaos that is in the person's mind when they're around. People, I have noticed, have said how they were expecting a much more explosive experience as it progressed, but I feel that that was a feature instead of a bug. It was deliberately designed to hold back instead of going full force. I found it very intriguing how it was constantly sort of edging towards that um, that crescendo and then pulling back just at the right moment. I I really liked it. One thing that's really cool is all throughout it there's sort of ghost-like harmonies going on that's almost representative of the noise going on in the in the narrator's mind. It's, it's really, it's really something special in my opinion. Next favourite, track 5, Whisper My Name In Your Heart. Now that's intriguing for a few reasons. One is the fact that it very much takes the chord progression and borrows a lot of the similar sort of sounds presented in Closing Time by Supersonic mixed with Bittersweet Symphony by The Verve. Very interesting how it's utilising those sorts of sounds but still creating something new. The other thing that's very interesting is how it could almost be taken as a parody because it's presented as a a love song that was written for the person being sung to, but outrightly saying that it's neither particularly great or especially new, which I feel is a reflection on how it's derived certain sound styles, but done something uniquely fast-like with them. The way it prevents itself from turning into parody is how it's framed and delivered. It's very sincere, very honest, it really gives you this image of someone who just wrote out a song whilst they were thinking of the person and just wanted to be honest about how they feel about them, whether it happens to be some great overture or just something very simple as the song turns out to be. 
I find it very intriguing to just sit and listen to it and sort of break down how the lyrics and music very much bounce off of each other and create this quite cool conversation. It's true to how you can often find yourself fondly remembering about someone and hoping that they also share those fond memories. Last of my favourites is Kimmy. Now, of my favourites, that is my favourite of my favourites because it is absolutely deliciously dirty in the music. It's got this rough, raw, scronking guitar. It's got this rhythm that kind of feels like a strip club. It's just, it makes you feel deliciously filthy. Like, you kind of feel wrong for listening to it, but at the same time, you can't help but kind of like it. It's sung in this strange, ethereal-like language that you just sort of like, I don't know what this means. I, I, it might actually be something being said, but I couldn't find the lyrics, and this doesn't have a lyric sheet, so... I'm just going by how it sounds kind of weird and alien, and at the same time it really helps to bring to the forefront this feeling of something very sexual. What's interesting about it is how you keep expecting it to at any moment go absolutely nuts, and it progresses in such a way that you feel like that's going to happen, but every time it nears that point it keeps it tight and brings it back and it's always it it kind of puts me in mind of key by devon townsend in how he played around with going towards the brink and then pulling it back each time it's something quite fascinating to behold and now the song i don't care for I would like it. Ironically enough, I don't. An otherwise really good song, heavily mired by absolutely god awful production quality. Like, it. The vocals are on the left, the audio is on the right, and when I was listening to it, I thought something was going wrong with my headphones took my headphones out, same effect was on the speakers, so it is just really dreadful. It's really frustrating because I can hear the kernels of a good song trying to eke their way out, but they're dragged back through the mud by just the worst quality recording I've heard in a long time. I mean, old school black metal has better production quality than this, and that was deliberately done bad. I don't know whether this was intentional, but I can't imagine it was. This is another case where I don't often agree with the audience, but if this was one of the ones that they went, no, this, this should just be cut, then yeah, the audience got it right. I mean, I know I had trouble, I had issues with Like God. I kind of wonder if they were re recorded at the same time because there's similar production quality issues, but like God, just a certain point through, had issues. This has them from the very start. So it's a, it's a painful listen, and I would honestly say, if you do listen to this album, just skip that track. 
you're not going to lose anything from not listening to it. After hearing what audience selected and unselected have to offer, making evening and night proves one very key thing. It's valuable to listen to your fans, but also vital to maintain your own voice and vision. I'm not entirely sold on this format of album creation, but I do feel that it's a good meeting halfway. Ultimately, I feel like a fully fledged single album could be properly realised with doing half and half. Audience selected for half of the album and then figuring out a through line and maintaining your own idea with what you especially prefer. Overall, Making Evening and Night gets a 4 out of 5 with Audience Selected getting a 4.5 and Unselected getting a 4. That's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy and hopefully all this noise will be over.